Today on Keep Shooting Monday, in-depth review time. Hey everyone, Greg Cazillo from Cazillo.com. Welcome to Keep Shooting Monday number 48. Just as you saw today, I'm doing an in-depth review of the Epson R2000 photo printer. Uh, it's up to 13 by 19, excellent model. I really like it. A lot of good information coming up later on in the show. A couple news items. First was Sigma sent out a press release letting you know that some of their lenses might not work properly with the Nikon DF. There's supposed to be a firmware update coming soon, so be aware of that if you are a Sigma lens owner and you've purchased the DF. Probably still going to be working in auto, in manual focus mode, maybe just not in autofocus. I think that was the, the primary issue there. Next thing is this palette device. It was just funded on Kickstarter, it was featured on Engadget. I cannot wait to get my hands on one of these. Basically, you can create your own set of manual buttons and dials and sliders and all this stuff, which is going to be really cool for using in Lightroom, in Photoshop, and pretty much any other program. You can get all of these individually when they finally release them. You'll be able to buy them one by one. They're still on Kickstarter. You can still fund it and get it at the introductory price. Uh, looks really neat. Should be awesome for, like I said, just about any program out there and I uh, can't wait to get my hands on one. Last thing I wanted to mention today, probably the most embarrassing video I have watched in a long, long time is this photographer who was shooting this wedding. Absolutely terrible, 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 terrible. He's up on the altar. He's using this stupid Gary Fong dome thing which it's obvious he has no idea how to actually properly use a light modifier because he's just using it forever, you know, whether he's up close, whether he's far away or she's far away. You know, it's, the, it's the, just they don't know how to use a light modifier uh, up on the altar and around and making all kinds of noise and walking in front of the video camera. I don't know if this is a videographer that was shooting this footage or not, but it was just terrible. So do yourself a favor, don't be this kind of, photo of wedding photographer. Um, you know, the the, what they were dressed in was wrong, the way they are using the camera was wrong, they were holding the camera wrong, everything was wrong about this video. Don't be this kind of wedding photographer. This was so embarrassing, I couldn't even get through the whole video. It was that bad. I've tried twice to watch the whole thing, and I just couldn't do it because it was just so embarrassing. I just just hung my head and just like, oh my God, I can't believe people can be this bad. So try and watch it and let me know. Uh, I am very happy to announce that I have some prizes for the holiday photo contest. Hopefully this one will be an annual one. We'll be able to get you some prizes for the holiday one. Uh, assignment, I should say, I shouldn't say contest, I should say assignment, uh, since they're not always uh, contests and don't always have prizes. But anyway, I do have some prizes for you this year. Uh, you do have to get the photos up by the 27th at uh, 5 p.m. Eastern, posted over to the forum. Uh, let's get those up. Make sure you have your cameras out and ready to go. Uh, here on the East Coast, we have some snow on the ground, so that always helps make it seem a little bit more holiday, a little bit more Christmassy. That's always a good thing. So uh, let's talk about some prizes. Uh, we talked about one of the prizes already last week, but let's start from third place. Third place is going to be a Tiffin Neutral Density Filter. Uh, third place for the photo contest. Thank you very much, Tiffin, for sending that over. And actually, they sent a couple of filters over for me to test, and I'm going to be doing a review of those very soon. Second place is going to be getting a set of Honol Photo uh, Light Modifiers for your small strobes. Uh, I have some assorted ones I'm going to be sending out. So those are third place. Thank you very much, Honnell, for sending those. And a couple weeks ago, I talked about a nice little softbox from Adorama. 
And guess what? They're actually going to be sponsoring the number one prize. And so they, the number one prize this year is going to be one of these, which is one of their glow small soft boxes for your little strobe. It's about $150 value, something like that. So that is our number one prize this year for the photo assignment. So make sure you get those posted up to the forum, give me some really good ones, and I will choose the winner. So uh, let's make it happen. Now on to the Epson R2000 photo printer review. Last week I mentioned that Epson sent over a stylus photo R2000 for me to review and I showed you the box initially and here is the printer. So here is my first review. Uh, I've gone through the machine and um, installed it, did some test prints, so I'm going to go over all the kind of initial stuff. And actually this is going to be a longer series. I have a bunch of uh, things that I want to try out and do and some tutorials that I want to do on printing. I used to not really do any inkjet printing at all. I thought it was a waste. I thought there was going to be too much waste, too much paper waste, too much ink waste. Um, but I've actually had really good luck with it as of late. Uh, I had my 7800 machine, which is a 24 inch printer, and I was also using a 2200, I think the model is, for a while for small, some of my smaller printing and location stuff. And uh, now when I'm when getting this machine, I'm going to be using it some more. So, um, so I'll go over the kind of the basics of it. First, uh, this is a 13 by 19 inch printer or a 13 inch wide printer. Typically your largest sheet you're going to be able to get is a 13 by 19. They also do make roll paper for it and it comes with the roll paper uh, holder, I guess you would, you would say. But unfortunately they do not make a cutter for it. The 2200 that I had, if I wanted to I could have gone out and purchased a cutter for it, cutter assembly. Uh, I'm guessing they're reserving that part for the larger end models like the 7800, the you know, the 7 series, the 9 series, the bigger professional printers, which is really nice to have, I will say, when you're doing high volume prints. A um, couple of other things. Uh, this thing has the Epson Ultra Chrome, what do they call it? Epson Ultra Chrome High Gloss 2 Pigment Inks, which are uh, a really good quality. I'm very happy with the color coming out of this machine, uh, even compared to the other machines, which have more inks in them, more separate cartridges in them. Very happy with them, but um, overall the color looks excellent. Black and whites are really good on different types of papers, which I'm actually going to talk about. I have some prints here that I'm going to show you, and so uh, very happy with that stuff so far. Um, it says that the cartridges are, um, well let me back up. The cartridges are all separate colors, which is nice. Uh, they have different colors, and then they also have this gloss optimizer, which gives you a better luster and a better high gloss or better glossy print. You don't get as much posterization when you're looking at the, the image from the side. And so it um, overall it's a, it's a much better, much cleaner, super high gloss. But the nice thing is, and I'll go over this later, it has two different blacks. It has the photo black and also the matte black. And I'll explain that in a little while. Uh, one thing that I did not uh, understand was it says that they're the quality or I should say the quantity of ink is supposed to be higher but unfortunately nowhere on any of the packages you know they say that these things are supposed to last longer nowhere on any of the packages that I could find anyway did it tell you how many milliliters is actually in one of these uh, for example this is actually a 220 milliliter cartridge for my 7800 printer uh, a light light black one 220 milliliters and uh, you know, I pop this thing in, lasts for a good long time. One of these, unfortunately, I don't know how long it's gonna last, but um, you can actually see the ink levels after I think 10 or 12 eight by 10s, and a 13 by 19, so it's not too bad, they do last. They say they're 50% more prints, but it's really hard to say uh, without actually doing some testing and I wish it would actually tell you how, my, how much ink uh, is in one of those. Let's talk about installation of this thing. First, where'd my CD go? There it is. Don't use this thing. Don't use the CDs. I very, 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 very rarely use one of the installation CDs when I'm first go gonna install a piece of hardware. 
I will skip this, I'll throw this away because it's really not needed. You go right to the website, download the newest driver. It's gonna have all the fixes. Maybe you have a newer operating system than what the CD supports. Toss those CDs, they're worthless. Go and go to the website, download the newest driver for your operating system. That's the better way to go. Uh, I actually had to download both drivers, one for Windows, one for the Mac. Both of them installed fine. Uh, the Mac one was actually able to access my keychain and then automatically uh, tell the printer what my Wi-Fi settings were, so I didn't have to retype that. I don't know if that feature is in Windows or not because I didn't install it in Windows, so um, maybe next time I'll need to use it, but so far, so good. It just uh, connected and it's working just fine. I'm actually going to print something out for you here. Shoot, I should have fed my paper in there already. That's all right, in the next segment. Let's talk about accessories and paper. Uh, it comes with a roll paper adapter. This is actually a 24 inch, two inch roll that I'm gonna cut down. Uh, I have some ideas for this because uh, I was doing some research on pricing and the most economical way to print with this thing. So as far as your paper is concerned, the best way if you're gonna print mostly eight by tens, five by seven, small stuff like that, the most economical way is to get a 10 inch roll of paper and you get a 10 inch roll, which is actually on a three inch core. So it's a bigger paper core than this, it's bigger around than this. And obviously that's not gonna fit directly into the printer, at least on not on this roll paper adapter. I'm gonna make sure that this is going to work. It worked just fine on the old 2200. It's able to load it and print it and gave me a long sheet of eight by tens. That paper, just to give you some idea, um, the 10 inch roll by 100 foot long, uh, 10 inch wide that is, will give you 158 by 10 prints for $38. And that's really inexpensive as compared to eight and a half by 11 sheets, which is 50 sheets, 50 prints obviously for $25. So you're gonna end up spending $75, sorry, 70, yeah, $75 for those 150 8x10s uh, versus 38. So that's half the price. That's a really big savings. And uh, if you're doing a lot of 8x10 printing, you know that would be definitely be the way to go in that roll. But again, I'm gonna make sure that that's going to actually work. Um, what was the other thing I was gonna mention? Oh, Epson also sent over a bunch of different paper types, which I'm gonna talk about here from the luster and matte and this and that. So. Uh, I'm gonna go over those in a second, but I also wanted to talk about ink. Um, comes down to one thing, buy the Epson ink. If you want quality, if you want reliability, just buy the Epson ink. Yes, I know it's a little bit more money, but it's just not worth the time, the expense, the waste, all that stuff. Just stick with the Epson ink and you're gonna have a lot less issues. You're gonna have better color quality, better color consistency. And uh, you know, I buy it for my big, big printers as well as the small ones, just stick with the Epson inks and you'll be fine. So let's talk about different papers. Epson so sent over a selection of uh, their luster and glossy and matte. And so I wanted to talk about those a little bit. I actually just hit print on this so you can hear how loud it is or actually it's relatively quiet. Uh, hopefully that's going to print. I hit print. Let's see, oh, there it goes. So it's just starting there. Uh, this one was actually the first one that I did. Um, remember when I talked about those a while back? Um, first print that I did, good color, no problems, no issues, because I had everything set right. I know that's a whole other video, but uh, I will put in a couple of screenshots of things that I did and set. And um, so first print, perfect color, looks exactly like the screen, which is what I would expect. Um, that's actually a luster paper. And then I have another assortment here of different papers. Again, another luster with a black and white. Uh, here's a portrait that I did with some really good color, some really nice reds and oranges in there. Works out really nice. Another black and white. And then um, I was actually not happy with the first one of these, and I'm trying to remember which one it was. This was the first print that I did of this. But this one has just a little bit more contrast and a little bit better color, a little brighter. And that's the nice thing about this is being able to 
take an image and just see it right away. You know what? I need to adjust that a little bit and proof it and, you know, bam, I'm done. And, you know, it's, you're moving on to the next thing. You just have this, I don't know what the word is, just like the satisfaction of having your own work and you know it's done and printed and it looks good and it's just nice to be able to take an image from the photograph stage, you know, taking it and creating that image all the way out to actually producing a physical picture that you can actually hold in your hand. And it's just so satisfying, it really is. Here's another uh, piece that I did. I think I said a minute ago that I'm a luster paper fan and I am. I just like the density and the extra saturation and the better look of a luster paper. Um, I'm just a bigger fan of it. I, I just like it to pop a little bit more. I don't think that you really get that from the mat. I think it's just a little bit more washed out as my phone is ringing here somewhere. And I'm gonna cancel that. Anyway, I think it's just a little bit on the, the flat side. And um, you know, for black and whites, that can be fine and, and it looks okay. You know, it's not really an issue. It doesn't bother me. But when it comes to, you know, color photographs, I personally like the luster paper the best. Uh, glossy can work sometimes for certain images, but uh, really what it comes down to is personal preference. What is it that you want to convey with that image? And that's a nice thing, is you can pick up a small pack of paper and uh, try some things out. It could be just a, you know, a couple sheets of 8x10. A lot of times you can get like test packs of paper. See what it is that you like. Like for example, this was a piece of canvas that um, another photographer gave me. Just had, he said, hey, just try it out. And um, again, it's just a completely different look. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of canvas, but you know what? It works really good in certain situations, certain images. You know what? Great, if that's what you wanna create. That's the cool thing about this is you have so many different ideas, different um, media to be able to print on and do things uh, with your photographs. I'm printing another portrait here uh, out and um, eight by tens take about uh, two and a half to three minutes, something like that. This 13 by 19 that I printed, it took about seven or seven and a half minutes since there was so much black and so many dark colors, so much ink that it had to lay down. That's probably why that took a little bit longer than a normal 13 by 19. But um, overall, as you hear, it's a very quiet machine. Barely even here at printing. Um, sometimes when it's doing its adjusting and things, it could be just a little noisy, but overall it's a very quiet machine, easy running machine, um, no problems. And there we go, there's another really nice eight by 10. Color comes out perfect and uh, consistent. That's the other thing is uh, color's very consistent. So who is this for? Who would be using this most of the time? I would say that this machine would fit a very wide range of photographers that want to do things with this. Uh, from your be very beginner who really hasn't done anything yet, uh, all the way up to someone like me who's been printing for a while and would actually be taking this machine on the road with them to events. Um, you know, at two and a half minutes, it's a good speed to be printing those eight by tens. Not as fast as some other machines, um, you know, missing the cutter, missing a couple of features, but you know what? It can still really get some decent output in a good amount of time. Um, but you know, from the five by seven stuff, the eight by 10, the four by six, that's probably going to be the majority of your prints that you're going to be using. But sometimes it's really nice to be able to output that 13 by 19. You know, something like this is a much nicer gift. If you did one full frame, 13 inches wide, that's about 13 by 16. I think it's a little over like 16 and a half or 16 and a quarter, somewhere in there. Give you the full frame image. But still, this is a nice size gift for someone. Take it out, put a mat, two inch mat around it and a nice frame. By the way, when you're getting stuff framed, make sure that you go to a real picture framer, not like Michaels or AC Moore or one of those companies. You know, get a real picture framer that knows what they're doing. Um, talk about that in another video, but um, yeah. Nice printer, nice machine, really good color, very consistent. I like the new gloss optimizer thing, which gives you a nice color. You can actually kind of see it, or at least I can see it 
on this. It actually laid down a coating on top of that gloss here, of that gloss, and um, just gives you just, just enough, just enough of that little bit of extra gloss just to get rid of that little bit of posterization. Uh, something I did forget to mention was the gloss black versus matte black, or the photo black they call it, versus matte black. The photo black is used for the, your luster, your glossy prints, but then your matte black is used in this, in the, your matte paper. And so it's nice to have those, both of those colors in this single machine. That way you can very easily switch from one paper to another. As long as you set your settings right in the computer, it will automatically determine what inks to use. Whereas my other machines, if I want to switch to a matte black, I need to completely empty it out, at least that one color. It's going to run all that ink through and it's actually going to waste it and then I, in order to make that switch. So um, this machine in that instance is actually really nice and so uh, ends up saving a lot of money and it makes it easy for you to switch back and forth in between those different, um, different substrates and different papers. So uh, any questions or anything, please ask in the comments. Uh, overall, really nice machine. Uh, thanks to Epson for sending it over. Greg Cazillo, Cazillo.com. Thanks guys, keep shooting. See you.